Greetings to my family of LA Springs. I'm glad you enjoyed the last book that I read you. I have another one to share with you today. Uh, this one more obviously serious than the last one. It's actually a book on the creation story, sort of re an imaginative poetic retelling of the creation story. Um, which might seem like an odd thing to be thinking about for the Tuesday after Easter. But I think it's a valuable reminder that God is bigger, and just how much bigger God is, which is something that we definitely need to be need to be hearing in uh, our current circumstances. The book is At Break of Day, written by Nikki Grimes, illustrated by Paul Moran. Once upon a time, there was no time. There was no earth or sky or sea. There was only darkness and the waters of the deep, and a father and son who watched over them. The son, knowing exactly what was in his father's heart, asked, Now, father? And the father said, Yes, son, now. Then the son leaned over the darkness and softly blew over the waters. The darkness swirled as though a giant finger had dipped into it and given it a stir. And that's how the universe began. Then the son spoke, and his voice, as strong as his father's, thundered. It seemed to come from everywhere at once, and at the sound of it the darkness scattered and made way for light. And in that light a myriad of bright angels appeared. Then the light was swept to one side and the darkness swept to the other side as though by a mighty arm. The father named the darkness night and the light day. Night had a beauty all its own. And so did day. But the sun longed for a touch of color, so it commanded a coil of blue ribbon to unravel across the gloomy haze and to stretch itself between the heavens above and the waters below. The ribbon seemed rather plain, though, so he added tinted swirls of rose and purple, orange and gold, and wispy puffs of white. There, said the sun, finally satisfied. The father smiled and called the ribbon sky. Early the next morning, the sun called out to the waters, Gather yourselves in one place, and leave space for deserts and plains and foothills and mountains to walk upon. So the waters flowed east and west and north and south, leaving dry places in between. And the father called the dry ground land, and he called the waters seas, because he liked the sound of it. The son noticed that his father was pleased, so he continued, Let there be velvety mosses and rose-covered meadows, lilacs and long trailing vines, hyacinths and honeysuckle, birch and beech, and hardy trees whose branches are heavy with fruit, said the son. And let each one be full with its own kind of seed, so that there will be growing trees and plants for many years to come. And they were. By now, three days had passed, but the father's plan was still incomplete. So on the fourth day, the son spoke again. One of his words burst into a circle of blazing light, and another spun into a disk of pale silver. The father called the blazing circle sun and the pale disk moon, and the sun hung them in the sky to mark the days and the seasons and the years. But on what did he hang them? Only he and his father knew. Ah, sighed the father happily, for the beauty of the sun and the moon delighted him. Seeing his father's pleasure, the son laughed for joy, and the sound of his laughter rose into the sky and shattered into shimmering fragments. The father called them stars, and many of them were angels in disguise. The son could hardly wait for the fifth day to begin. At dawn, he headed for the seashore. Then, while his father watched, the sun filled the seas with sharks and seals, starfish and stingrays, whales and walruses, and short-finned and long-finned creatures that glided through the clear water gracefully. The father nodded his approval. Then the son whispered, and the word he whispered became a feather, and the feather traveled on the warm wind of his breath. In an instant, the whir of wings beating the air echoed through field and forest, 
and scores of birds soared and skimmed and swooped across the sky. The birds looked left and right, but could not find the place where the wind began. Five days had come and gone, and the son had done much to please his father. Yet there was more to do. So on the sixth day, the son said, Let there be bulls and boars, lions and llamas, jackals and jaguars, goats and sheep, and creatures, roaring, or, and creatures that crawl, and all manner of wild animals roaring and screeching, loping and leaping, crouching and creeping upon the earth. And there were. The son paused for a moment, gazing at his father. He loved his father, and he enjoyed sharing his feelings and thoughts and visions with him. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have someone else to share these with, thought the father. The son, knowing his father's thoughts, nodded. Aloud, he said, I'll make someone with a mind and a spirit who does not wish to be alone. Someone who loves and dreams as we do. I'll make a person, or maybe I'll make two. So the son scooped up a handful of clay, and he molded and shaped a man and a woman. He shaped them with tenderness and care, making them strong and beautiful, with noses that could wrinkle with delight, and eyes through which his love could shine. Then he took a deep breath and blew his life into them. The father called them Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve looked at each other, not quite certain what to do, but the father had already given the son instructions. So the son motioned toward the mighty waters now crashing against the cliffs, and toward the birds of the air and the creatures of the land and sea, and he gave all those treasures to Adam and Eve, and to all the human beings who would be born after them. Take good care of these treasures for me, he said. The son looked toward the father. Go on, said the father, standing in the background. You're doing fine. So the son showed Adam and Eve verdant vineyards and lush orchards and field after field of wild nuts and berries, wheat and oats, beans and barley, sweet corn and squash, potatoes and pumpkins. Here is enough food for you and all the creatures of the earth, he said. Enjoy. Finally, the sun leaned against a mountain and sighed. He looked at the sky, shot through with rose and purple light, and he gazed on the earth, laced with green growing things, and on the glistening sea. Eventually his gaze came to rest upon the beautiful human beings he had made, and he said, This is good. His father, standing next to him, agreed. And on that day, the seventh day, they rested. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. God is bigger than our pasts. He is bigger than our present circumstances. He is bigger than our culture. He is bigger than our understanding of him. Because while we are but tiny parts of all that is, he is far, far bigger than all that is. The difference between all creation and him is far greater than the difference between all creation and us. Because he made it. Because it's all his story. You probably already knew that. But he asked me to remind you. God bless. Take care. And I'll talk to you soon.